Normally, when uh, we decided to, to have a look on, uh, on the stages, to have a recon on the stages in advance, is because that stage has something special or something different compared to a normal stage. And uh, that's the reason, actually, why last year we chose the Torino stage. Then, as the race entered Torino, Bora Hansgrohe started to rip the race apart, putting riders off the back specifically Alejandro Valverde and Guillem Martin as they headed for the Superga. Wilco Kelderman then leading them up and over the Colle della Maddalena and taking the bell and up to the Superga for the second time. Uh, and this year we also choose uh, the stages uh, around uh, the area of Tirreno Adriatico because uh, we were close by, so it was not a big investment uh, for riders to lose other days around the uh, the wall to have a look on the stages, so it's a kind of puzzle that comes together uh, after a few months that you work on the, on the parkour. So my general idea on the Giro 2023 is they split the Giro in two, in two times, like a football match for example. So we have the first period that is long, is nine stages, and starts from the first time trial in Abruzzo until the last time trial in Cesena. And the third week for me is the second period. Second period is just mountains. Long stages, a lot of meters of elevation in a row. So I would say first period is for specialists, time trialists, and second period, so third week, is pure climbers. I think it can really help if you are aware of what's still coming. For me, it's also always important to see like a descent, to uh, yeah, to see everything, to see the approach to the climb, to just see the important um, sectors. But I think for the last week, it's probably a bit different because you also have like one or two climbs who are just like super long and uh, on a big road where you cannot do so much than uh, just hang in and try your best to survive. And I think uh, RCS did a quite good job to plan a Giro like that because uh, they properly split in two with a kind of, I call it, warm-up for the third week. And that period could be interesting for the people who is uh, looking for glory with breakaways, for example. But third week then uh, will be the final battle with the GC leaders and the pure climbers over the mountains. And I think in this way it can be a, an interesting Giro until the last stage because I do see that all the climbers, they have to, maybe they are back in GC because they lost a little bit too much time during the time trial. So they have to use the mountains to attack and to create a good show for the spectators to, to be back in contention. So this looks pretty interesting, I would say. In the last few editions of the Giro, we were used to have uh, the start outside Italy. That means one extra uh, rest day. But in 2023, we are back on having nine days in a row. On stage, uh, let's say, seven, eight, and nine, that is the last weekend before the rest day, and the fatigue is coming across to the rider. So that's also one of the reasons why I wanted to do the recon of stage eight, because on paper it doesn't look so hard, but the climbs are not easy, we could see. So at the end, it was interesting to be there and to have a, a look on that stage. I think a recon provides you with a really good idea uh, how the race looks and how it could look like in the in the Giro. Then sometimes I, I have like some race situations in, in my head where I think like okay there and there I could probably do something when the race is uh, going this and that way, but often it's completely different and. In the past, when I was like uh, in the breakaway, then 
I was always like searching for opportunities where I can do my move and there I was never like having a real plan. I was always just waiting until a moment came where I had the feeling this is the right moment. Kemner takes the stage win on Edna to go with his Tour de France victory. I was also a rider. For me it was really important to visualize and to have in mind the sectors or the, the climbs because I could, you know, go back to that memories and try to visualize the different options that can happen during the race. And uh, for now I take it as also an extra bit of motivation so that you really feel like, okay, I'm preparing something and I'm really in the mode of uh, yeah, trying to do something good in the Giro. I looked into every stage, but uh, I don't have like a key stage like oh, this will decide everything. Like we have so many stages where you can either lose some time or gain some time. Then you have like three time trades, which are also like super important. This looks like a really good effort. It's going to be close. Will he manage to unseat Magnus Sheffield? I think he's going to do it. Yes. Yeah, for sure, uh, we could see in Tirreno how big was the impact of the time trial in the race. That you know, each and every detail about the time trial is becoming more important than ever. And what that means, details are yes, the race route first. Second is also materials because then there is uh, for sure some uh, brainstorming about which is which can be the best material to use in that kind of time trial. And then also comes the pace strategy, but this is something related to the also weather condition of that day. So I would say it is much more important to see a time trial, to decide which material to bring to the Giro, and, uh, and also to have a look if there is some dangerous corners or uh, or mountains or climbs or whatever can be.